This chapter I call Sejuras, Enjambments, and End Stops. Oh my! And the reason these three terms are the keys to unlocking Shakespeare, and they sound scary, they're not. Basically what we mean by an end stop, an end stop at the end of a line is basically a period, a question mark, an exclamation point, a colon or a semicolon. It basically means the line stops. So a classic example would be from Midsummer Night's Dream when Puck says, My mistress with a monster is in love. That's an example of an end stop. An end stop literally is at the end. My mistress with a monster is in love. That's it. She's got the thought out. And she can take that breath now and get on to the next sentence. Now, a sejura is a trickier little booger. And it basically follows our good friend, the enjambment. And to tell you the truth, enjambment is sort of a made up word. The actual term is French. It's enjambment. And basically, its, its root origin means it's like jamming a leg onto a table. That's really where it comes from. It's, it's, a, it's a furniture term that we use in literature. How funny is that? But, um, so, but, in, but I call it an enjambment because what you do with the line is you're taking one end and literally sticking it into the next line. A lot of actors, when they see Shakespeare's verse, they get to the end and they just stop. Don't do that. Because, unless it's clearly spelled out with punctuation to do that. In most cases, if it's a comma, it's a catch breath. You can just take that to sustain to the next line. Oftentimes, again, because modern editors have put those commas in where they probably shouldn't be, the flow of the line gets broken up. So um, we're going to take a look at another uh, term that I really like. It's called monosyllables. It's basically one-syllable words. And when an actor gets that, it's a dead dead hint to an actor that they need to slow it down and take their time. Let's look at this line from the opening of The Merchant of Venice. In sooth, I know not why I am so sad. Good. Now, we're going to take a look at a combination of end stops and enjambments in one of my favorite speeches from Henry VI. This also is an example of builds as lists. Most actors get into Shakespeare and they see the lists and they just go, oh God. What they don't understand is the builds that come from the lists. Anyway, take a look at this one from Henry VI. Ah, oh, what a life were this! How sweet, how lovely! Gives not the hawthorn bush a sweeter shade to shepherds, look, shepherds looking on their silly sheep than doth a rich embroidered canopy to kings that fear their subjects' treachery? Good. Now, let's, let's play with this a little bit. As you can see, there are a lot of moments where you can stop and can't and take a breath here. For example, ah, what a life were this. What's there? Exclamation point. Uh-huh. What's next? How sweet, exclamation point. Uh-huh. How lovely, exclamation point. Right. So, would you say there's a build there? Yes. I would agree. Now let's take a look at the next line. Gives not the hawthorn bush a sweeter shade. What do we have there? Uh, after, at the end of that. Uh-huh. An enjambment to shepherds looking on their silly sheep. And what's after that? Another enjambment. Uh-huh. And what's after that? Another enjambment. <laughs> so if I had to tell you what I would suggest at the, at the end of How Lovely, what would you do there to make sure you can sustain the line? Take a nice deep breath. Uh-huh. <laughs> And also, think about how the visuals, Shakespeare loved visuals with language, especially when you don't have scenery, you don't have a lot of sets. It's your words that paint colors. Each of these words has a tone, has a color, has a feeling behind it. And oftentimes when we've been really stressed in our lives, there's just been that moment where we're like, I'm just done. <laughs> This character is getting to that, that place. And I, I, what I'd like you to do with this is just take your time with it and explore how it would feel to not have stress in your life, to just be free to be and do what you need to do for yourself. Not like this is a stretch or anything, right? <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. <laughs> so go ahead and take that time. 
I would say take a full breath after each thought in that beginning. Ah, oh, what a life this were. How sweet, how lovely. Gives not the hawthorn bush a sweeter shade to shepherds looking on their silly sheep than doth a rich embroidered canopy to kings that fear their subjects' treachery. How'd that feel for you? Much better. Yeah. <laughs> and what did you, did you get that sense of imagery? Yes. That sense of only... Yes, if different. only. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good work. Thank you, too. Chucks, you stay. You stay. You stay here, damn it. <laughs> Sorry, at that moment I was possessed by a northern Vietnamese jailer. I... <laughs> <laughs> So here's a speech that synthesizes everything we've talked about, and this is going to be our final speech for this section. It's from, a me from Measure for Measure. It's uh, easily one of Shakespeare's darkest, and I always say comedy, with a giant question mark at the end of that. This is from the very opening of the play. We have a duke that is basically going to turn his responsibility for his entire city over to another guy. So what I'd ask you, Chuck, is what do you see? What's the first thing that you jumps out at you when you look at the speech? The first thing is that it starts um, with a split verse. Uh-huh. And, and does it start with a strong stress, or is it sort of a? Oh, it's a strong stress. OK. And um, what's the next thing you see? Oh, the next line, there's a full stop there. OK. But, uh, so we, we look at this. Let's just look at this line for line. We have with a leavened and prepared choice proceeded to you. What two things are there? Um, well, you yeah, have the enjambment at the end of uh, prepared choice going on to proceed to you, full stop. Uh huh. Um, and therefore, take your honors, another uh -huh. stop, with a big breath. <laughs> <laughs> and why is that? Because the next two, uh, next couple of lines, you have enjambments. Mm hmm. So you've got a full almost two and a half lines here that are continuous. And what happens mid-line? Uh, matters of needful value, what happens there? Matters of needful value, the, you have a, a stop there. And that's our old friend the Sejura again, isn't it? So what does that imply to you? Is that he, is he's changing directions? Is he changing tempo? Um, yeah, it's a tactic change there. Yeah, fare you well. But there's also a significant beat change again there, isn't there? Yeah. So there's a list. There is enjambments, sejuras, and end stops. Oh my. <laughs> and there's builds throughout. So this speech is the synthesis of everything we've taught so far, and one of the reasons I've asked Chuck to do this, uh, because I think he'll have a lot of fun with this. So take a second, get prepped. No more evasion. We have, with a leavened and prepared choice, proceeded to you. Therefore, take your honors. Our haste from hence is of so quick condition that it prefers itself and leaves unquestioned matters of needful value. We shall write to you as time and our concerning shall importune how it goes with us and do look to know what doth befall you here. Fare you well. Good. Excellent. So do you see how that all ties together? Now, just as a game, I want to try something. You remember? Oh, God, this is so embarrassing. Uh, you remember that old 70s series, Carter Country, where the guy would dismiss someone by just saying, handle it, handle it. Anyway, but it was an old, it was an old joke based on, you know, it was a southern town, and one of the key mm -hmm. lines was, just handle it. I'm done with you. Okay. This is the Shakespeare version of, I'm done. Fare you well. Yeah. <laughs> Don't throw it away, but make it quick. I think this is one time where a monosyllable can actually be, and especially if you hit the well as a stress. So I think fair is a stress and well is a stress. But other than that, I just want to see what happens, because this is my evil streak manifesting. Okay. You know, we've got to do all this stuff, we're going to do all this stuff, I'm going to write to you when I'm done, see ya! <laughs> just what happens if you just totally dismiss him? And and. The given circumstances, would you say this is somebody who has a lot of time? No. I would agree. Yeah. Did you guys hear how the pace picked up as he went and what the enjambments did for the structure of the line and what it did for the entire thing? It made it sound like, I got to go now. 
They're, the, the, they're about to pull the gate back from the flight. So, yeah, let's, let's try this again. No more evasion. We have with eleven and prepared choice proceeded to you. Therefore, take your honors. Our haste from hence is of so quick condition that it prefers itself and leaves unquestioned matters of needful value. We shall write to you as time and of our concerning shall importune how it goes with us. And do look to know what doth befall, befall you here. Fare you well. <laughs> Good. Or better yet, let's take this, take that last bit, how it goes with us, and do look to know what doth befall you here. Take a beat, and it's like you're still standing there. We've all had that boss, you know what I mean? Let's just take it back to, um, we shall write to you, because that's a complete thought. We shall write to you as time and our concerning shall importune how it goes with us, and do look to know what doth befall you here. Fare you well. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Thank you so much. We hope that these lessons have shown you the fundamentals of Shakespeare's verse. What we're going to do next is we're going to show you scenes that provide all of these examples. So please stay tuned for that. Thank you.